Good evening and welcome to this regular meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth. Our meeting date is Monday, April 17th, 2023. I'm Mayor Todd Kaysenberg and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the clerk to note our starting time for the minutes is 7 p.m. A warm welcome is extended to councillors, staff and any delegations who will participate in this meeting, regardless of whether being physically in attendance in the council chamber in Listowel or being connected through web technologies. We begin tonight's meeting with the playing of O Canada. Those in chambers as able are invited to stand. traditional land of the Anishinaabe peoples. We wish to recognize the long history of Indigenous peoples in Canada and show our respect to them today. We recognize their stewardship of the land. May we all live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship. I invite all to consider how they may show this respect with a moment of reflection. Tonight's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after this meeting as an archived video. To those viewing this meeting via the YouTube channel, a warm welcome to you. To those present in the gallery today, by attending a public meeting of the Council, you are consenting to your image, voice and comments being recorded. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice image and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances when deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Attendees are advised that they may be subject to legal action if their actions result in inappropriate and or unacceptable behavior and or comments. Thank you. At this time, I invite decorum over the course of the coming meeting. As can be seen, all councillors are with us in the chambers in Listowel. Let us move at this time to item 2.1 of our agenda pertaining to pecuniary interest. For the benefit of those uh, unfamiliar with our council practices, provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. 
In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite all councillors with a perceived pecuniary interest, including those who have declared in writing, to verbally advise the chair in public session and to submit documentation to this effect in writing to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should a potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may so declare and act at any point in the meeting. We have not been advised ahead of this meeting of any conflicts so to my knowledge. Councillors, opportunity at this hour or at any future one uh, to so declare. Anyone wish to make a declaration? Seeing none, let's move forward. All participants are invited to speak when called upon by yours truly serving as chair. Those participating remotely who wish to chat, speak sorry, may draw the attention of the clerk through our web conferencing technology's text chat function. Remote participants are asked to generally maintain a mute state in the web conference until I recognize your right to the floor. If, when I do so, recognize I don't hear you because you are muted or are having some technical difficulty, I will advise and, where appropriate, send assistance. Let us now focus on the people's business. I invite those in the chamber to silence and put away their phones. And, of course, I invite decorum. Regarding item 2.2 of our agenda, I have a motion before me for the adoption of the agenda for tonight's meeting. Read simply that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved. Can I call for a mover on this one? Councillor Blazek, thank you. And Councillor Nordum will be our seconder. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. We're now at item three of our agenda, the so-called consent agenda. Consent items are placed on our agenda because they are believed to be non-contentious, yet they may warrant Council's recognition and or action. Grouping them expedites our business. However, any councillor wishing to extract an item from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, and individual action may do so. There are 20 items on our consent agenda tonight, including the minutes of our last regular council meeting. Councillors, anything to extract here or any corrections that you've noted and would like to see in the minutes? Seeing none, then I have a resolution for our consideration as follows. The consent items 3.1 to 3.20 be received for information in the minutes of the April 3rd, 2022 regular council meeting be adopted. Can I call for a mover? Councillor Richardson, thank you. And Councillor Rothwell will be our seconder. Any discussion or debate on this matter? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is showing carried. Thank you. Let's move forward then to uh, item four. Uh, per our agenda, we have planned to hold a public meeting to the build and installation of a public communication tower within the boundaries of North Perth. To that end, we must adjourn from our council meeting, and I have a resolution to enable us to do so as follows. That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth adjourns at 7.09 p.m., for the purposes of a public meeting concerning the following proposed Signum Wireless Telecommunications Tower. Can I call for a mover on this? Councillor Anstead, thank you. And Councillor Andreessen will be our seconder. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. That means our council meeting is temporarily recessed for the purposes of the public meeting. All right, here we go. Uh, we're calling a public meeting this evening for the telecommunications tower that has been earlier described. This is a public meeting to deal with a proposed Signum Wireless Telecommunications Tower located at a property described as Part Lot 14 Concession 18 
or 132 Madison Street West, Elma Ward, Municipality of North Perth. This is in Moncton. Correspondence, reports, and comments received regarding this application will be considered by Council. Those in attendance remotely wishing to make comments uh, concerning this application will be also given the opportunity to do so. Those wishing to receive notice of the decision regarding this application must notify the clerk via email or telephone, giving their mailing address and telephone number. At this time, I'm going to call for a summary of the application. This will be offered by John Bice, who is a planner with the County of Perth. Mr. Bice, please. Never fails. All right, so this is a public uh, correspondence, public consultation for Signum Wireless uh, Telecommunications Tower, uh, just on the outskirts of Moncton there. Uh, and the reason for a public meeting, uh, rather than um, just a regular council report, is due to the proposal's proximity to the settlement area of Moncton. So Signum Wireless has retained uh, Fawn Tour International Incorporated um, to undertake the municipal consultation process for proposed telecommunications tower installation. Uh, the tower will be located on private uh, on a private property uh, located at 132 Madison Street. Okay, so Signum Wireless is proposing a 60 meter tall uh, self-support communications tower uh, with a fenced-in compound, which would occupy an area of about 144 uh, meters squared. Uh, that 60 meter height is proposed uh, as there is currently a large gap um, in coverage and capacity um, in the area and Signum wire, Wireless's clients, client network area in Perth County as well. So this is a photographic simulation produced by the proponent. Um, and we're just gonna kinda go over that right here. So communications towers in general are regulated by what's called Innovation Science and Economic Development uh, Canada. Uh, short or acronym would be ISED and that is a branch of the federal government of Canada. So proposals for new telecommunications towers uh, are required by ISED to consult with land use authorities uh, in citing these new um, station locations, communication. Um, ISED's telecommunication protocols also require that neighboring uh, property owners within uh, three times the height of the tower uh, be notified of the proposal. The municipality of North Perth also has a protocol for telecommunications towers, um, and, and that I just kind of alluded to uh, recently, and so that essentially states that a public meeting needs to be held if um, a tower is located in proximity to a settlement area. So as cell towers are regulated by ISED, Canada, um, in accordance with the Federal Radio Communications Act, municipal zoning, uh, bylaws may not control or limit uh, the type or height of the antenna system or support structure uh, for any other purpose. So public consultation that was uh, completed by uh, Fontour International um, is, is under the following here. So mail notification was given to the surrounding property owners within 180 meters of the proposed location for the tower. And then public notice was also given in the listable banner on March 23rd, 2023. Uh, the public and the municipality has until April 23rd uh, to provide comments. Um, so Fontour International Inc. has advised us at this time that no inquiries or concerns have been received. I did receive a phone call recently uh, about two hours ago from um, uh, a neighbor who just wished to learn about uh, the process tonight. Um, and has decided I don't think he is in attendance today, but um, we'll provide that. Either way, members of the public and the municipality uh, will, will be able to receive a second report after this at a, at a later council date with all comments um, combined. I can take any questions. Thank you.
All right, let's get the audiovisual settings correct here. At this uh, time, uh, individuals attending this meeting who wish to make comments may now do so. Uh, we'll do that in this order. First, uh, any of those in favor of the application other than the applicant uh, in attendance may offer comment. Are we aware of anyone who has registered for that purpose? Does anyone in the gallery wish to avail themselves of this opportunity? Okay, I'm not seeing that. Next, then, are those who may be opposed to this application. The clerk is indicating that she's not had to pre-registration to that purpose. Anyone in the gallery wishing to speak in opposition to this? Seeing none, uh, there is the opportunity for the applicant or the agent to speak to this project. Is the applicant or agent uh, with us and wishing to speak to this? Hold on, hold on. Let me get your microphone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The applicant, uh, Brendan Chu, who's from Fontour International, is um, on the call here. I'm not sure if he would like to speak, but um, okay. he is present. So the op opportunity is available. Um, if you'd like to speak to this, uh, you're welcome to. Just take yourself off mute. Uh, hello. Thank you, Mr. Mayor um, and uh, members of council and uh, staff. Um, yes, I, I can speak to this project a little more. I actually have a presentation ready. I'm not sure if I would be able to share my screen uh, here as I'm attending virtually. Okay, it, it appears that something is happening. Um, I've just tried to share my screen. I don't know if it is visible at this time. If, if uh, anyone could let me know, that yeah, would be appreciated. We're not seeing it at this time. Uh, Clerk Klein, do you have uh, any insight into this? Um, he should be able to share his screen, so I'm not sure why we're not seeing it. Okay. Would you like to, to stop that share and try it again, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so I've just tried that again. Uh, if you could let me know if that is available. There we go. We're seeing it now. Thank you. You may proceed. Uh, perfect. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for the time tonight. Uh, as mentioned before, my name is uh, Brendan, and I'm uh, from Fonter International, representing our clients, uh, Signum Wireless Towers, and their interest in a telecommunication or wireless service uh, tower uh, at 132 Madison Street West. Um, the agenda for my presentation uh, will be as follows. Uh, there will be a, a quick overview of Signum Wireless and wireless networks, uh, some insight into the site selection uh, process and why uh, a tower here, uh, the public consultation process, which was already uh, covered by John, uh, and um, some, some comments about the tower design, and then just the conclusion at the end. Um, so Signum Wireless Corporation is a third party tower builder and what that means is uh, they offer wireless uh, infrastructure um, to uh, telecommunication t uh, carriers or wireless internet service providers um, in the area. Uh, in most cases, Bell, Rogers, um, and other big companies own the towers themselves. But in this instance, uh, Signum provides the infrastructure and then those uh, companies are tenants on the tower and pay rent. So these towers, um, uh, have room for up to three carriers on a single tower and uh, the goal and mission of uh, Signum Wireless is to reduce tower proliferation in the area. So as opposed to uh, Rogers, Bell, uh, TELUS all owning a tower in one area, uh, there would be one tower owned by Signum Wireless with all three carriers operating off of it. Um, now just some background information on wireless networks. A wireless network can be thought of as a series of interconnected parts with base stations and antennas working together to create a network. Uh, these base stations uh, and antennas, when adequately placed, provide a continuous uh, wireless service. 
Uh, in a network, each base station and antenna uh, serve a fixed number of calls and data requests, and the the service area shrinks to support the users closest to the base stations and antennas, leaving those further away with drop calls and poor data speeds. And in order to solve this, um, these gaps need to be filled by constructing new telecommunication towers, um, the process which you could see uh, is demonstrated in the image on the slide here. Uh, some purposes of wireless service towers include uh, providing EMS, fire and police services, uh, reception uh, on the tower, voice and data, uh, internet service, uh, and uh, internet for streaming and uh, business needs, um, which is increasingly important as uh, more people are working from home. Uh, to provide all of these services, each carrier must have their own network uh, and antenna, and um, the municipality uh, would also have the ability to place their emergency services antennas or uh, internal communication equipment on this tower. Um, again, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this slide as uh, it was uh, covered uh, very well by John already, but the proposed tower again is located at 132 Madison Street West in Moncton. Um, these towers are federally regulated, but proponents are still mandated to consult uh, municipalities and the public. Um, in this instance, we are following um, the municipality's uh, protocol in, in uh, uh, conjunction with the um, a default uh, ISED protocol. Um, the application start date, the first correspondence was around February 28, 2022, with the uh, public consultation starting on March 23rd of this year and uh, concluding on April 23rd of this year. And of course, the public meeting, which we are attending today here. Um, just some uh, uh, background information on the existing towers in and around the Moncton area. The closest tower is approximately uh, 4.8 kilometers away at 6211 uh, line 66. Uh, this tower is a 37 meter uh, ExploreNet tower, which is a wireless internet service provider. Um, because of this distance, uh, it, it wouldn't be able to service Moncton for uh, telecommunication needs, which is Signum's uh, main client base, and actually Rogers is their interested client for this tower. Um, the next closest uh, telecommunication tower is uh, near Milverton, which is over 11 kilometers away from our proposed site. Um, Again, I'll just uh, brush over this uh, very fairly quickly uh, for the public consultation process. Uh, notices were mailed out to a total of five property owners uh, within uh, three times the tower height, uh, which is 180 meter radius of the subject property lines. And in addition, a newspaper ad was placed in the Listowel uh, banner on March 23rd as well at the start of public consultation. And again, here is just another slide depicting the photo simulations that were shown uh, in John's presentation. On the left is what uh, the 60 meter self support uh, tower would look like with three carriers on it. And then the photo on the right is just what the uh, current image uh, from this spot uh, is without the tower. Um, in conclusion, uh, voice, data, uh, and 911 services all benefit from this installation, uh, as well as uh, the, the public uh, for telecommunication needs in the area. And this tower should be the only one that is required in Moncton uh, for current and future uh, needs. Uh, that is the end of my presentation tonight. Uh, thank you all for your time, and I am available to answer any questions uh, that anyone may have. Great, thank you very much. Um, let's turn next then to that opportunity. Uh, councillors, do you have any questions or comments you'd like to make in this public meeting about this application? Councillor Rothwell, let me get your microphone here. There we go, please. Thank you, uh, Mayor Todd and, and uh, good evening council and members of the public. Thanks very much for uh, your report, uh, John, as well as uh, to uh, the agent uh, for his presentation. Uh, this has been a, a dead zone uh, for quite some time uh, and there were previous proposals uh, and I'm frankly quite glad to see that this one's before us. 
Uh, most exciting, of course, is uh, what it means for uh, people in the Moncton area are going through that uh, area. Uh, the fact the 60 meter uh, and your uh, Signum Wireless is, uh, has multiple clients and uh, it would be one tower location uh, for potentially uh, additional clients beyond Rogers, I think is uh, good news for this area. I'm certainly in support and uh, provided the public is uh, in support of this. It uh, seems to be a, a fairly straightforward uh, uh, process and we encourage uh, uh, if, if the uh, process does get the green light uh, that it can go ahead as soon as possible and then uh, perhaps they can turn their attention to other areas within North Perth which uh, have also been uh, expressed interest uh, in the Listowel and, and uh, other areas as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell. Anyone else uh, with comments or questions? All right. I kind of, you stole my thunder. I was thinking the same thing that, uh, how do you feel about Listable there, Brandon? Uh, okay. So um, thank you. At this point, uh, we can uh, consider a motion to adjourn uh, this uh, public meeting. And uh, that motion reads as follows that the public meeting under the Planning Act. Is that right, Clerk? Uh, no. Thank you. Uh, the public meeting is now adjourned at 7.27 uh, p.m. and the council reconvenes into regular open council. Can I call for a mover? Thank you, Councillor Johnston. And seconded by Councillor Anstead. Thank you. Any uh, discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. We are waiting on one more. Councillor Andreessen, is that you? All right, Councillor Andreessen records a vote in favor of the motion. The motion, therefore, is carried. Um, thank you uh, to our delegation from Sig Signum. I'll get my words right. And um, appreciate uh, your participation in our meeting this evening. And Mr. Bice, as always, thank you for your services in the reporting. All right. That means council is back in regular session at this point. And uh, the... Um, Next motion that I have here uh, is just sort of a quick follow-up on the public meeting. Uh, it uh, it uh, reads as follows. The Council of the Municipality of North Perth receives the report titled Municipal Consultation and Public Meeting for Proposed Signum Wireless Telecommunications Tower and holds a public meeting affecting lands described as 132 Madison Street West, Park Lot 14, Concession 18, Elmo Ward, Municipality of North Perth. Uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Callum, seconded by Councillor Richardson. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that moved. And that is carried. And I gather, based on what I heard, that we'll hear another uh, or receive another report in the near future and consider this item with some more diligence. Thank you uh, <clears throat> again. All right. Um, we don't have any uh, scheduled uh, delegations this evening, uh, which uh, means that we can move forward to item five, reports from departments and key staff. Uh, we don't have reports queued up in the CAO's department this week as item 5.1, but uh, as I'm sure all of you know, the CAO and his team are very busy, including um, uh, paying attention to our volunteer appreciation night, which happens tomorrow. Um, next up then is item 5.2, reports from the Strategic Initiatives Group Department. Uh, as item 5.2.1, our manager of strategic initiatives, Jessica McLean, brings forward a report addressing potential actions related to additional residential units or additional dwelling units, depending on what you like to call them, in our community. I'll call on Ms. McLean to introduce counsel to the report and to the opportunities which lie ahead based on uh, the recommendation from staff. Ms. McLean, the floor is yours.
There we go. Um, thank you. North Perth Council approved a housing work plan in October of 2022. Several initiatives were included in the work plan related to additional residential units, or ARUs. And this included the development of materials to support those interested in construction, constructing ARUs, as well as marketing and promoting their benefits to the public. Staff discussions identified the benefits of implementing an additional residential unit registration program in conjunction, in conjunction with the promotion and support of ARUs in the municipality. Staff from the Strategic Initiative and Development and Protective Services Department collaborated on the development of the bylaw and guide, which are attached to this report for Council's review and consideration. The purpose of the additional residential unit registration program is to promote consumer safety as well as ensure ARUs are known to emergency services. It is proposed that the initial cost to register an ARU would differ based on whether the property was occupied by the owner. For example, $150 for new ARU registration where the property is occupied by the owner or $300 for new ARU registration where the property is not occupied the owner. All registered ARUs would be subject to a three-year renewal fee. In order to be registered, the ARU must be constructed under a building permit and have satisfactory final inspections completed. These units will be inspected to ensure compliance with the zoning bylaw, property standards bylaw, building code, fire protection and Pre prevention act, and the fire code. The administration of this bylaw and program will be facilitated by the current staffing complement within the development and protective services department. As well, in an effort to encourage the creation of more diverse and higher density housing options and promote the benefits of ARUs, staff are proposing that a one-year moratorium on registration fees be implemented with the approval of the ARU registration bylaw. Staff um, reviewed similar bylaws in other municipalities to create this, including the City of Stratford. In addition to the bylaw and registration program, the ARU guide that has been developed will be posted to the municipal website and promoted on social media. As well, paper copies will be made available where appropriate. And I can answer any questions council may have at this time. All right, thank you, Ms. McLean. Um, just quickly, where in the bylaw is the uh, statement about the moratorium for one year? It is fees. not directly in the bylaw. Okay, so um, the resolution doesn't appear to address a notion of a moratorium in the first year. Do we need to amend the resolution for that purpose or do you have advice on this? Um, perhaps we could add a, a third part to the resolution to um, refer to that fact. Okay, we'll consider that as we invite Council to ask for the questions. All right. Um, questions, first comments on this report for Ms. McLean. Councillor Rothwell, let me get your microphone. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Todd, and thanks, uh, Jessica, for the report. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, I think this is uh, uh, will be a benefit to our community, and I appreciate the work and effort that the staff have put into this. Frankly, I would have liked to see it earlier, but uh, better now than, than, than later. Uh, so, uh, in particular, I'm, I'm uh, pleased to see the uh, uh, additional uh, uh, dwelling units uh, guide, which will be of importance for uh, uh, members of the public that wish to uh, undertake uh, this uh, structure. And I think that will also help our building department staff uh, as they are uh, dealing with uh, individuals uh, that uh, may have questions. And I think uh, this resource, uh, uh, which other communities have as well, uh, will uh, answer many of the questions otherwise uh, phone calls or emails that would be required. So I think it's uh, great work. I'm fully in support. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Councillor Rothwell. Uh, anyone else uh, wishing to uh, offer questions or comments? Okay. Uh, Councillor Andreessen. 
Uh, thank you through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, Ms. McLean, I just want to let you know that I really appreciate the idea of a one-year moratorium on the fees being imposed. I think that this will give the community a year to get organized and do some thinking and um, getting uh, getting registrations prepared and, and these additional residential units uh, set up. So I appreciate that additional year for that moratorium on those fees. I think that's um, a good idea in this, this uh, resolution. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Councillor Andreessen. Anyone else with comments or questions at this point? Okay. So I'm going to read resolution in and add that extra point for you <clears throat> as follows. That bylaw number 37-2023 being a bylaw to provide for the registration of additional residential units be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time and be finally passed. And that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. And that Schedule F of the Fees and Licenses Bylaw Number 160-2015, as amended, be further amended by adding the following fees to the schedule. Registration of a new ARU where the property is occupied by the owner, $150. Registration of a new ARU where the property is not occupied by the owner, $300. Renewal of a previously registered ARU, $100. And that Council place a moratorium on the implementation of Schedule F pertaining to ARUs for a period of one year from the date of passing of this bylaw. Okay, so I'm getting sort of nods from staff, from Council, that's good. Can I call for a mover? Uh, Councillor Norton will be our mover. Councillor Andreessen will be our seconder. Thank you. Any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is unanimously carried. And, and with Councillor Rothwell, I too express appreciation that this has finally come to our table. Thank you, Ms. McLean. Thank you, Council. All right. Uh, let's turn now to uh, item um, 5.3 on our agenda, reports from the Corporate Services Department. In item 5.3.1, staff has brought forward a report demonstrating a need to adjust this council's meeting schedule in the month of July, further to the statutory holiday of Canada Day falling on a Monday. I'll call on North Perth Clerk Lindsay Klein to review this report. Welcome, Ms. Klein. Let me just get things right here on my board. Okay, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you to members of council, fairly straightforward report. We just had a little oopsie when we created the council calendar for this year and uh, didn't recognize Canada Day, which falls on, which will be recognized on Monday, um, July 3rd. So we just have to move the dates forward in July for uh, an additional week. So we're just proposing that the two meetings in July be July 10th and July 24th. All right, thank you. Um, any questions or comments on this uh, small correction to our schedule? Okay, seeing none, uh, thank you for that. I have a resolution as follows. The Council of the Municipality of North Perth approves the revised 2023 Council meeting schedule. Can I call for a mover? Councillor Blazek, thank you. Councillor Duncan will be our seconder here. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much, Kirk Klein. Uh, we have no reports uh, tonight from the programs department as item 5.4, but we know they're gearing up for a busy season as we head towards the summer. And we hope it will be summer soon. I, I think that uh, we're seeing this strange snow today after being spoiled by a week of nice weather. All right, let's turn to uh, item 5.5. This is items from the facilities department. As item 5.5.1, our manager of facilities brings to the table a report that proposes adjustments 
two various fees associated with our recreational facilities programs. I see that our manager of facilities, Mr. Jeff Newell, has stepped to the podium. He's going to give us an overview on this one. Uh, let me get things right for you here. Just hold on one second, Mr. Newell. All right. Uh, and that one, you're on. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mayor Kastenberg and members of Council. Um, this evening, I'm presenting a report with regards to the amendments to Schedule H of the Recreation Rates and Fee Schedule for the coming 2023-2024 uh, year. Mm -hmm. At the recent uh, April 20 or April 12th meeting of the North Perth Rec Advisory Committee, uh, the following motion was passed uh, in that RAC approves the 2023-2024 rate and fee schedule and requests that this be sent to North Perth for consideration, North Perth Council, sorry, for consideration, and it would be effective May 1st. Um, the rates were increased by 2%, which is basically a standard practice that we do, um, and then we would have rounded either up or down to the nearest dollar to make it make more sense. Um, the one thing that was a, a standout uh, was that we didn't do a 2% increase for alcohol. We've moved uh, the price of an alcoholic beverage from $5 to $6. Um, and then a profit share would be uh, 40%, which is a decrease to the service clubs from 45 to 40%. Um, and that would see that they would also uh, get an, in, an increase in their revenue even though the percentage of their uh, of their take is is smaller, we also have a twenty percent rate, uh, which would be not for a service club, but for someone that does want to do a profit share, like a buck and doe or something along that lines that they're trying to raise money for for themselves. So there's also a twenty percent um, rate that we have for for those people. Um, be happy to answer any questions. Uh, we're just looking for approval on the rates from council, um, and uh, that's the recommendation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Newell. Questions or first comments on this matter? It's never popular to raise the price of drinks, Mr. Newell, but uh... <clears throat> no, it's uh, it was it was. Interesting to talk to the service clubs because certainly people didn't want to see that, but they also understood that we couldn't wait until we get to $10 a drink in order to make that jump. Uh, of note, we just purchased uh, cups for some services for the or for some uh, events we have coming up, and it was over $2,000 for cups, so around $0.20 cents a cup. So prices are escalating, and we needed to address that. Fair enough. All right, thank you. Any uh, questions or first comments further to this? All right, I'm not seeing any. We have two resolutions here. Uh, first is um, as follows. The Council of the Municipality of North Perth approves the amended Schedule H, Recreation Rates and Fees, effective May 1st, 2023. Can I call for mover? Councillor Richardson, thank you. Councillor Anstett is our seconder. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that's carried. And now we have to um, enable this by bylaw to change the, uh, the schedule as follows. That bylaw number 41-2023 being a bylaw to amend bylaw number 160-2015, the fees and licenses bylaw schedule H be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed, and said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call for mover on this one? Councillor Blazik, thank you. Councillor Durgan will be our seconder here. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Mr. Newell, the new fees are in process coming up. Thank you.
All right. Uh, let's turn to item 5.6 on our agenda. Met reports from our manager of environmental services. We don't have a report from that department. We know they have lots going on. Let's turn to item 5.7, reports from the manager of operations. Mr. Couch has joined us at the podium to talk about item 5.7.1. In this item, Council has received a recommendation to award contracts for construction services on two different road projects in the community in this current year. I'll invite uh, Mr. Couch, who's with us, to speak to it immediately. Uh, Mr. Couch, let me just turn the camera on you. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg, members of Council. Um, we've had the uh, open houses for these projects. The design work was done through approval of Council last year, uh, and in front of you are what are uh, low uh, bids so we were pleased with that well within budget uh, for companies that we're very familiar with and recommendation letters for the construction of elm avenue which is expected to start as soon as practical once awarded and then for louise avenue reconstruction as well which is in the school zone which is anticipated to happen through the, the school break period um, i really don't have more information than what's in front of you i can answer any questions and the recommendation is to award to the low bidders All right, thank you, Mr. Couch. Straightforward. Uh, Councillors, any questions or first comments on this matter? Okay, uh, Councillor Rothwell. Thanks, Mayor Todd, and thanks uh, for the uh, report. I do note, uh, and it's a cautionary note uh, that you have in the report, that uh, both of these uh, uh, tenders at the low bid are uh, below the uh, capital budget amount, but the capital budget amount does include additional items. Uh, but uh, the work that uh, you and Triton have done, like, is is the amount uh, within each of these, within the uh, projected um, budget uh, piece, capital budget piece for each of these, I, I hope? Yes, so uh, I provided the full budget amounts and uh, with those other incidental costs for engineering uh, geotechnical work, etc., cetera, uh, well within those budget numbers. Great. That's yeah. what we need to hear. Thank you. Rather nice to hear that story, don't you think? <laughs> These days, uh, indeed. All right. Any other questions or first comments on the, this uh, matter? Okay. Seeing none, I have a resolution as follows. That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth awards the following contracts. Uh, 1 NP 013 023T reconstruction of Elm Avenue in the amount of $1,079,267.50, excluding taxes to Moorfield Excavating of Harriston, Ontario, and NP 014 023T reconstruction of Louise Avenue in the amount of $774,277, excluding taxes to Hannah and Hamilton construction of Listowel, Ontario. Moved by Councillor Rothwell, seconded by Councillor Johnston. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Those contracts are awarded. Thank you, Mr. Couch and the engineering team for the work that has been done. Uh, let's turn now to item 5.8, a report from the Development and Protective Services Department. As item 5.8.1, Council is invited to forward a collection of conditions to the County of Perth Land Division Committee or its designate related to an application requesting consent to sever lands in the Elm Award of the Municipality of North Perth, owned by parties Richardson. County of Perth planner John Bice, who works with and on North Perth Files, is with us to provide an overview and recommendation. Welcome, planner Bice. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg and Council. So this consent application is for an infill lot in the village of Moncton. It's uh, located at 140 Win Stanley Street. Um, and it's on the west side of the street as well. There we go. So the purpose of the proposed consent, as I alluded to, was uh, is for a residential infill lot. Um, the lot to be severed is in yellow, uh, and it's approximately 2,340 uh, meters squared with 20 meters of frontage, 
along with Stanley Street. It also has a depth of 115 meters, um, approximately 380 feet. The retained lot is in red, uh, and that uh, retained lot would be 3,027 meters squared with 26 meters of frontage, again, on with Stanley Street. It has the same depth at 115 meters. So the property is designated village in the Perth County Official Plan, and uh, so is the entire village of Moncton. So a few things that I want to first and foremost discuss would be the water, sewage, and surface water. Um, as Moncton, so we're going to talk about uh, the water services first. Um, Moncton is serviced by private wells. Um, the applicants will be required to provide that a water supply for the lot uh, is feasible through condition number six, um, and that's a North Perth condition, I believe. Uh, Moncton is predominantly developed as privately serviced uh, residential lots. For sewage services, uh, the, the applicants have submitted a hydrogeological assessment uh, and completed by GM Blue Plan Engineering as part of their application package. Uh, this submitted um, study concludes that a tertiary septic system is required. The applicants will be required to submit, sub submit site drawings showing that the tertiary syst septic system is satisfactory to the North Perth Building Department through condition number four, and this is to ensure feasibility. And then surface, surface water, sorry. Um, the applicants will also be required to submit site drawings demonstrating that the grading, that a, that a lot grading and drainage plan for the severed lot is to the satisfaction of the North Perth Building Department, and that's condition five. Provided that the applicant is able to satisfy conditions four through seven, the applicant will be then required to enter into a development agreement with the municipality regarding the required servicing. So lot size and access. The lots, the size of the proposed uh, severed lot meets the minimum lot area requirements, but it doesn't meet the lot frontage requirements in the Hamlet Village residential zone. So as a condition of consent, it will be required th that they obtain a minor variance, and that's condition number nine. So the proposed uh, lot frontage is 20 meters, and in the HVR Hamlet Village residential zone, the requirement is 24 meters. And that will be discussed more so at the minor variance stage. So consideration of the application to reduce the lot frontage will require demonstration that the site can be adequately serviced. The Ministry of Transportation uh, also requires a condition. And this condition is uh, that prior to the construction of any entrances for the severed and retained parcels, that the owners shall obtain entrance permits um, through the MTO, and that would also be to the satisfaction of the MTO. The surrounding area of Moncton is predominantly low density residential developments in single detached homes uh, and a variety of small scale commercial developments uh, with, with industrial inter intermixed as well. Um, the low density single detached nature of Moncton will be maintained by the proposal. Uh, as the residential lots located along Wynn Stanley Street are of varying lot sizes and frontages. The proposal is consistent with the single detached residential form, residential lot size, and density of Moncton. So the applicants also submitted uh, a D6 uh, com land use compatibility study as there are industrial developments in the, the, the adjacent vicinity. Uh, this study was, was prepared by GHD and concluded that the, the development is not anticipated uh, to cause any compatibility issues. So notice of application was circulated on March 13th, 2023. A sign was posted actually on the adjacent property, and that would be to the north, on March 13th. So since the sign was posted on the wrong property, the planning department recirculated the notice of application to provide additional time frame for the notice of application to be circulated to the members of the public. Uh, so the recirculation of the notice was uh, sent out on March 27th. Um, the notice of application that was circulated was the first circulation necessary for the consent. 
an additional notice of public meeting is still to come after the conclusion of this presentation. At the time of, of going through this presentation and preparing the report, uh, letters, emails, and correspondence have been received by five members of the public. Um, and these comments have been attached in the council package for review. So at this point, staff recommend um, that Northworth Council forward the conditions listed below or through your package uh, to the County of Perth Land Division Committee uh, for consent file B4122. And I'd be happy to answer questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bice. Uh, colleagues, questions or first comments on this matter? Councillor Blazek first. Let's go ahead. Um, this is not specific about this property, but I appreciate the effort that you guys made to make that right for the public, giving them extra time after the signage was put on the wrong um, property. Sometimes those little things go big, big way. So thank you for that effort. Okay, further questions, comments? Councillor Rothwell. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd. Thanks for the report, uh, John. I do note uh, some of the comments uh, from the public uh, regarding the issue of frontage. And I just note, uh, uh, just for council as well as the public, is that when we look at the uh, uh, drawing uh, that was submitted uh, or attached to your report, I'm just trying to find the page number here. It's up a bit. Uh, anyways, uh, the issue is in terms of the frontage uh, only being some 20 meters on the lot to be uh, uh, severed. Uh, is in part, I believe, uh, based on the uh, uh, location of the existing driveway, which services the existing lot. The, I presume the anticipation here is that uh, if the severance is approved, they'd like to keep the, the driveway, the existing driveway with the existing lots, uh, as opposed to having to uh, relocate that uh, driveway. Uh, and uh, when you look further up uh, uh, along the property line, uh, there's two existing uh, uh, trees there. Let's see, here it is. It's on uh, page uh, 117 of our agenda package. Uh, I think that answers the questions that uh, members of the public, and I, presumably they did not receive uh, this sketch. Uh, so uh, hopefully the members of the public that uh, are watching or that here this evening can uh, see that information as to the reason why uh, the lot, uh, proposed lot size is what it is. Uh, and uh, I certainly concur with the uh, comments uh, in the report and the recommendations. Uh, we need to have additional uh, density, and this is one way to do it. An infill lot, it is not easy. Uh, having, you know, living in an area where there is a large lot and so on to see a new uh, dwelling but uh, coming in. But when I look at uh, the gray outline of, the, uh, of that drawing, which shows the, the proposed dwelling location is going to be in line with the neighboring property to the south, I think some care and attention has been made by the applicants to uh, address some of the uh, needs uh, or what they believe are the needs in the neighborhood. And I understand that they did have some conversation with some of the neighbors. So on that basis, I'm in support of uh, the recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell. Anyone else with questions or first comments at this point? Councillor Johnston. So just a quick question, John. So because it's narrow, there's still a lots of square footage because of the length, like 379 feet. So there's lots of length to get a septic system and everything in there. But it's the minor variance is going to be because it's four meters too narrow. It just Am I correct? Yeah, through you, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, essentially, yes. There's, there's, it's a depth, it's a deep lot, yeah. um, but the conditions are in place to essentially ensure the feasibility of these services, yep. including water or septic, um, and the conditions are in place so that they can provide us, um, you know, a, a sense of sense of, um, you know, feasibility to ensure that that's the case before. Um, they enter into that development agreement. That way, we're not creating the lot before we're knowing all the answers. Um, so that's one thing I would also note. And then the other thing would be the minor grants. Uh, it's conditions such that um, it be done after um, conditions four to, I believe, seven or eight. 
So that would be to ensure that, again, feasibility um, prior to then going down the minor variance route. But to make a long story short, you're, you're accurate. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm, if I might, I'm just sort of curious about the uh, shared water supply agreement. And uh, I think there was implication in the correspondence from at least one of those who participated so far in the process that they did have some concern because at the present time, uh, parts of the infrastructure for the shared water cross both of the proposed uh, lots that would be created with the severance. Uh, can you comment on, on like the physical infrastructure and whether there could be a problem here? Yeah, thank you. Through you, Mayor. Um, so the comment that we received is essentially uh, from one of the neighbors, I believe is 147 Brock Street. Um, but essentially, they have a shared well agreement, and that's a legal, private legal agreement between um, the owners of 140 Win Stanley Street. Um, that that agreement is is a private agreement, um, but we did put a condition in. I can't remember exactly which condition it was, seven, and that was essentially to, if the severed lot is for some reason unable to dr drill their own well, um, it's essentially to show that where that servicing is um, with that shared well agreement to ensure that the house isn't built over top of it um, or the septic isn't built over top of it. We just want to know where the locations are um, and that everybody's water services is intact. I think that that end goal is what I was getting at is it's important to make sure that we don't interfere with those uh, those agreements and that, um, you know, typically, like I'm thinking out loud here, um, severed and retained lots, if the water line is crossing both of them, then there would have to be some agreements in place if there's still provision of service, a lot behind it, if you will. That, that's, maybe I've got the geometry wrong, but I'm querying that, right? Yes, through you, Mayor. Um, yeah, that, that's a very valid comment. Um, we, the shared well agreement, um, it's a legal document, so we, it's essentially it's, it's between the, the private owners at that point. Okay. Just want to make sure that so we understand. You could, you could imagine a circumstance where um, a new party taking one of the lots, the severed lot, and the home there could object to the, pro the continuing provisions, and I would assume that that would all get carried through in deeds and property transfer. What's the word? Conveyances that I'm thinking of. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell, for helping me with that word. It was lost just for a moment there. All right. Any other questions or first comments? Okay. I have a resolution as follows that North Perth Council receives the report entitled Application for Consent to Sever Number B41-22 by Jennifer and Jim Richardson, owners affecting lands described as Plan 442, Lot 7, Elma Ward, Municipality of North Perth, 140 Win Stanley Street, for information. And that the North Perth Council forwards the conditions listed below to the County of Perth Land Division Committee for Consent File B41-22, affecting lands described as Plan 442, Lot 7, Elma Ward, Municipality of North Perth, 140 Win Stanley Street. And there are 10 conditions that follow. They were in the resolution package, and I'd prefer if I didn't have to read them at this point. Um, anyone really insistent that I read them at this point? All right, thank you. Um, can I call for a mover? And Councillor Andreessen will be our mover. Councillor Nordham will be our seconder. Any discussion or debate further? Seeing none, uh, let's have that vote. And I have to register a manual vote. I am in favor. And with that, we are carried. Uh, my computer decided to go to sleep at that very moment. Uh, so give me a second to come back online here. Uh, I might need a brief recess. I need my key fob, uh, apparently, and it's in my office. So um, that was carried. Uh, hold on for one second. Uh, my apologies.
you. My apologies for the brief delay. It improves. It reflects the improved security that we have in our IT system, which is a good thing. But it also reflects the fact that I left my keys, which hold the magic number um, in my office. All right, we can move forward now. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, dealt with item 5.8. That brings us to agenda item number six. Uh, this is a uh, opportunity for council to uh, request reports of staff or of our committees. Are there any such requests this evening? All right, seeing none, uh, let's move on to item seven on our agenda. We have a couple of items of correspondence that warrant our review and or action tonight. Uh, first item 7.1, we've received a request from Ms. Angela Stratton pertaining to the pros, pr to proposed route logistics for the annual Terry Fox run to be held on September 17th in Listowel. Council is invited to approve the request for the route and provide other small supports. Uh, I have a resolution to that effect as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approves the request from Angela Stratton for the annual Terry Fox run to be held on September 17th, 2023, and that North Perth Fire, Public Works, Parks and Recreation, OPP, and Perth County EMS uh, be advised of this event. Moved by Councillor Rothman. Well, thank you. Seconded by Councillor Blazek. Any discussions, debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Next up then is item 7.2. We have received correspondence from the North Perth Chamber of Commerce pertaining to their upcoming home and lifestyle show. They are asking for a time-limited exemption to the sign bylaw that would allow up to 25 lawn signs promoting the event to be installed in public spaces in the community and a few other small supports. Council is allowed to grant permission for this request. I have a re resolution to that effect as follows. That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approves a request from the North Perth Chamber of Commerce regarding the 2023 Home and Lifestyle Show on Friday, May 12th, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., and Saturday, May 13th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., at the Steve Kerr Memorial Complex as follows. One, permit 25 lawn signs to be erected around the municipality seven to ten days prior to the show with the removal of these signs within 48 hours after the show. And two, forward a request to the North Perth OPP to provide frequent surveillance to ensure safety and protection for the vendors and their property. And that North Perth Public Works Fire OPP and Perth County EMS will be advised of this event. Can I call for a mover? Councillor Johnston, thank you. Councillor Richardson will be our seconder. Any discussion or debate on this one? All right, seeing none, let's, uh, oh, uh, Councillor Andreessen, sorry. Um, can we? I just realized that I'm a vendor at this show, so I'm going to uh, declare pecuniary interest. Thank you. Good good planning at this point. So Councillor Andreessen is uh, declaring a, a uh, perceived pecuniary interest on this matter because of her involvement in the show. Um, I'm glad we held that so that she could escape at this point. She has left the chamber. Uh, so now there are nine of us eligible to vote. Let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. And uh, Councillor Anstett has done his usual diligence in uh, letting Councillor Andreessen know that uh, we have addressed this resolution. She is returned to her seat. Uh, thank you. And, and that was carried, Councillor Andreessen, so that you know. Okay, let's turn to uh, consideration of bylaws that have been recommended for action at this hour. Uh, for item 8.1, Council is asked to amend the appointments bylaw. Any questions before we consider this matter? All right, seeing none, I have a resolution as follows. That bylaw number 38-2023 being a bylaw to amend bylaws 147-2022, which appoints persons, including council members, to various boards, committees, and associations be introduced, read, and considered read for second and third time, and be finally passed. The said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call for a mover, Councillor Duncan? Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Norton. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Any 
and that is carried. Thank you. For 8.2, we have uh, proposed, it is proposed that we promulgate an agreement with parties Farish relating to a supplementary dwelling unit agreement on property owned by these residents. Uh, here's the bylaw resolution uh, for enablement that bylaw number 39 2023 being a bylaw to authorize the signing of a supplementary dwelling unit agreement with Robert and Susan Farish be introduced, read, and considered ready for second and third time and be finally passed. And it's said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Moved by Councillor Rothwell. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Anstead. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Let's move forward then to uh, item 8.3. Uh, in this item, Council is asked to stop up and close a road allowance on Hutton Street West in Listowel. Any questions before we consider this matter? Councillor Rothwell. Thanks, uh, Mayor Tom. I'm just wondering if we could hear from staff, like the actual area that we're talking about uh, here, uh, whether it's the part that goes into a, the next subdivision to the west or, or what that would be. Yeah, thanks. I, I queried this today as well. So uh, Mr. Couch has joined us at the podium. Go ahead, Mr. Couch. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. Uh, it's a very small portion of land, uh, not much bigger than from myself to the mayor, and it's a portion of the road allowance that simply needs to be closed legally uh, to allow for frontage for the one lot and also to allow us to create an easement over a sanitary sewer. So it was just a housekeeping matter with the developer. Uh, both of us benefit. Uh, they acquire the land. We acquire the sanitary easement. And again, it's a small portion that's actually off the uh, driven portion of the roadway at the corner of Hutton and Kiso. Thanks very much. I appreciate the explanation. All right. Everyone understand what we're up to here? Any other questions or comments on this before we consider the resolution? All right. Uh, do we, we haven't read this into the record yet, have we? No, let's do that. The bylaw number 40-2023 being a bylaw to authorize the stopping up and closing of a road allowance known as a portion of Hutton Street West be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time and be finally passed and said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk concealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call for a mover on this one? Councillor Duncan, thank you. And Councillor Anstett will be our seconder. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. That allows us to move down to item nine on our agenda. Are there any councillors wishing leave to give notice of motion this evening? Not seeing any, so that allows us to move on to item 10. For item 10.1, are there any announcements that would be of benefit to our community or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? And certainly, as always, those who are connected remotely, if there are any, um, may request the opportunity to speak through the text chat window while those in the chamber can just raise their hands. Anyone? Councillor Andreessen, thank you. Yes, thank you. Through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, the A team, um, Councillor Anstead and myself, would like to announce that um, today the budget presentation was released on our municipal website. And it's now available for the public to take a look at our budget proposal for both capital and operations expenses for 2023. And the public has the opportunity now to go to um, yoursaynorthperth.ca to make comment. Or they can make comment on, on forms through the municipal office or through our public library system. So we look forward to uh, hearing from our community and uh, look forward to... Um, their input as we move forward. Great. Thank you, Councillor Andreessen. Um, much appreciated all the work that uh, the team has done, both uh, yourself, Councillor Anstead, and the staff. Uh, it has been a fairly smooth process this year, even if a little bit delayed. And uh, and um, But here we are. We're, we're at that public consultation part, which is very important. Um, I'll just remind people in terms of announcements that uh, tomorrow night is our Celebrate North Perth Volunteer Appreciation Night. 
Um, counselors, of course, are, are welcome and, and somewhat expected. Um, and uh, we uh, welcome those in the community who uh, wish to attend. I think largely the, the uh, process was to register ahead of time, but uh, you know we can accommodate a few if uh, they show up unannounced, uh, just as long as they're well behaved, right? All right, so uh, <laughs> that brings us. Uh, any other announcements for the benefit of the community? All right, uh, let's move to item 11. We have no matters for consideration in a closed session meeting of council this evening. Um, that means that for item 12, there's nothing to report back uh, with regards to a session that did not happen. Council has a mandated good practice acts near the end of its meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business of its meeting through what is called the confirmatory bylaw. Um, for item 13.1, I have the draft of a confirmatory bylaw uh, number 42-2023, which reads as follows. The bylaw number 42-2023 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth be introduced, read and considered read a first, second and third time and be finally passed. And that the said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and the Clerk and sealed with the seal of the Corporation. Moved by Deputy Mayor Callum. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Blazek. Thank you. I will note that Councillor Andreessen has departed the Chamber uh, for administrative purposes. Um, any discussion or debate on this? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Councillor Andreessen is returning to her seat. And councillors, we have uh, completed the deliberations and taken action on the business that came before us this evening. It is thus appropriate for us to consider adjournment at this time. I have a resolution to that end as follows. The council meeting adjourns at 8.19 p.m. to meet for general council business on Monday, April 24th, 2023 at 7 p.m. Moved by Councillor Johnston, seconded by Councillor Richardson. That's not debatable. Let's have that vote. And that is carried. Our next regular council meeting is Monday, April 24th, 2023. Until that date, this meeting is adjourned.